Welcome everyone, hopefully you're not getting too much wind noise. We're on another Tuesday affordable at Acorn. We've drawn ourselves on peg 18. Uh, it is early in February and we've got 27 anglers on the lake today, which is quite a lot for this little lake, so it's going to be tough. Um, kind of set my stall out to fish for silvers. But I'm aware that I've, there are a few can't move in shallow today. We've had a bit of a mild few days, so maybe that's going to be a factor. I've got quite a lot of top kits set up, but I've only got three or four rigged. Just didn't really know what I was doing. I've got some crushed expander there, maggots, some floating maggots, and some pinkies. So they're pinkies, they're maggots. And then I've got some crushed expander there, and then down here I've got some brown bait mixed. My initial feed, which is going to be two balls. Or two balls with, as you can see, some maggots and some pinkies in. And that is 50 50 mix of Tom Thick. Now, Tom Thick Black, oh sorry, Tom Thick Dark, Sweet, and some Sonia Bates Roach. Just want to try and catch everything. So I'm setting my stall out to fish sort of in the bottom of the far slope, two lines for silvers. Which will probably feed. Feed one over here, uh, feed that straight away, two balls. Then I'm going to go over and have a little look, dobbing with some bread. Just found a couple of spots that I like the look of, just in case there's a few fish about. I'm going to that sort of 10 or 15 minutes if I'm getting indications. Then I'm going to go tight over to the bank of maggot. That's what the floating maggots are for to have a nice little f slow falling bait. It's quite shallow tight over here, sort of 18 inches. 16 inches which is you know a lot of the pegs I've been fishing you're getting sort of two foot tight over so it's a bit shallow on this peg but we'll see um, so I've got that, that and then I shall start with just maggot feed a little bit of maggot and then if I'm not getting anything I, shall, I can tap in some of the crushed expander and just see what we can get going sometimes down this back straight you get the small stocky carp don't think you're going to need a big weight to get into the frame today but you never know and I've also got a rig plumbed up down by this platform just in case so it's quite simple, quite straightforward, but I'll probably change the plans halfway through because none of it will work. So, see you in a bit, I'll put my nets in. Right guys, all in's just sounded. Starting off, putting in a ball, two balls. This is that Tom Thick and, 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 and Sonia Bates Roach mix that I was told you about a second ago. Uh, that's the only bit I'm going to put in to start with. But I want this line to sit and rest, I probably don't really want it for at least an hour or so. It's out of the way, to my right, it's almost kind of in front of the peg next to me, which is empty, almost. So, just sort of over the boundary between my peg and this peg. We've got two nice firm balls in. And then I can leave that. <coughs> what to do? Just gonna really come to fish for carp today but I just want to scope out the potential for carp in the swim with a bit of dogbin and a bit of maggot and then fish maggot over for the, the smaller carp I feel like the bigger carp are moving about a bit today I've seen I've bumped a few I've seen them moving shallow I've seen bumped a few I've bumped into a few with me I was plumbing up but they're really really shallow Yeah, they're really, really shallow, so it's easy to go quite hard to just get the bait down, let it settle down, let it take its time breaking down. There's a little bit of loose just gone on top on this ball now, so hopefully, I'm not putting the balls right down the same hole, sort of next to each other, so there's a bit of an area. And that can wait now. So, let's go and try. quick dob around a few of my likely looking spots. I'm not going to give it long dobbing, but I thought I'd put the cameras on. Because, you know, with, with match fishing, as you guys know, sometimes your first put can be your best put of the day. And after that, it all goes south. So I might as well have it running, get a bit of footage out. We can uh, work out what we're doing from there. Put the section on now. I 
Come on, boy. That's it. It's a fair, a nice steep slope. Just where I put on the rigging now, there's a nice steep slope right up against the far bank there, there's a steep slope. And what I like to do is lay the rig in so that the thread lies up against the slope, so it's off the bottom. It's on the, technically it's touching the bank, but it's not really on the bottom. Straight away, that was a fish off the bottom, above my hot bay that was. It's quite shallow over today, but I've got a feeling the fish are in the shallow water. Most people are probably avoiding the shallow water because it's so, it's been so cold and so hard, but that fish was, I don't know, a good solid bite, fast bite, but um, Could have been a lot. I'm pretty sure it was a liner. Could have been one of these small carp. They like to grab the bait quickly and drag, give you lots of bites and indications that you can't hit. But that's a good start, wasn't it? Indication first put, I was not expecting. We'll give it five minutes and then we'll try another spot. We'll give that five minutes and then if we don't get any, indica any more indications, I can't count one indication as anything really because that could just be one fish that was there and I spooked him and that's it now, he's gone perhaps. of a fish shallow. I'm going to, I'm going to go straight in. I think I've seen enough. I'm going to get my shallow rig out. Get on the maggot rig a bit tighter. So it's definitely a bite of fish that is shallower than I'm fishing. So this rig is still in there. A lot shallower this week. I'll find a maggot that's uh, floating. It's my favourite combo. We can fish tight up all across the bank there. The depth's very similar along a lot of the edge there. So I'm going to go to the same area because I felt like I'm going to bite through there. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I just got caught there. I thought it was a bite for a second, but that was just the line catching on the Side vegetation. 
Oh god, I've stuck something here, didn't I? But properly, it was over on the maggot line. Over on the maggot line. I don't know if you can see on me from any angle that you've got there, but on the end of the pole there's a really tiny pole pot. Um, and I've just been tapping in a few pinkies and a bit of ground bait every now and again. I had a roach, then I've had a little tiny stocky, less than a pound, and now I've had this which feels like another little stocky. I've got very light elastic on today, but I think I'd rather, I think that's how I'm going to fish it. I don't feel like a big weight's on the card, so <coughs> a light elastic might give me a chance of getting something that's really a better fish out. Uh, so I've got a lighter setup on, fishing over 11 bottom and 20 hook. It's not a light 20 hook, it's, it's a Kaizen, so it's strong enough, but it's like a nice to put double maggot on or maggot and a pinky on it's just about can't get away with it yeah. and then, oops. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one so quickly she just nicely up in the lip there just nicked him in the lip see five pound all day long any I'm going to put six on the clicker because I've already got a fish in there, which is half a pound, so I'll put me in the safety zone. So that's a floating maggot on, and a pinky that was. And then. Three pinkies in this little tiny cup. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, guys, but that will give you an idea of the scale. There's a, there's a pinky in a maggot, so it's a tiny little pot that I made from the top of the bottle. You need a shipping out. Like midline fishing, but just like scaled down, scaled down midline fishing from the summer. Just tapping the bait in in the same spot every time the wind allows. Isn't brilliant today, and then just push the pole a couple of inches past. Drop the float on top of it. The wind has decided to get up in the last couple of minutes, which hasn't helped. Any sort of indication on the float, just lift. You just reset the rig straight back in and back it on, and there you go. Worry about the, you go worry about the bait coming off and the maggot and fin. Tiny indication there. You're finding is you'll catch the fish almost as soon as you've fed if you're going to catch him. It's like they're coming straight to it. And if you ain't caught him, you ain't. You don't usually catch him on. After second or third, put something in the swim now because the float's just moved off the swim. So there's probably a better fish in there. Just wafting everything around. So try and get the rig back in where it's supposed to be. Trying to control it, got a back shot and stuff, just trying to keep it roughly where the bait's gone in. Although that didn't feed, I didn't manage to get the feed quite as accurate as I wanted on that put because. The wind was wafting about all over the shot. Maybe I'm going to have to be aware of that. As usual. Come here to fish silvers and that's carps put the cat amongst the pigeons because if, if I can get a run of them I'll have a nice day sport. I was here Saturday, the video for which will be out soon, where I was on the league and I've totally blown the league. But the video will already be out before this one comes out, so you'll have seen that if you watch all my videos. Totally blown it. Um, didn't even see a carp and here I am, look, I've just stopped another one. 
probably going to have to put up with a few foul lookers today because these carp are definitely coming in. Having a munch. And I've got quite a light float on, so chances are I'll get false indications a lot. But nice like little setups. I'm just trying to bring this car back slowly. He's doing whatever he wants on this gear. Which <laughs> is kind of the beauty of it, really. There's no snags in these sort of venues to worry about. This Preston Jura slip stuff just stretches and stretches and stretches. This is number seven. So it allows me to catch this it allows me to catch those um stockies as well. This fish is a lot more excitable. There we are, we pulled out and he's foul looked. Pretty sure he was foul looked. Yeah. But it's a sign there's some fish there. I've got a tiny shot on me at length, which is giving me nice rapid indications. And I may have to take that shot off if we keep foul looking them, just to try and, you know, just try and discriminate between what's a... What's a bite and what's a line off these bigger fish. At the moment, we've got fish in the swim, which is like a novelty at this time of year. So how are we going to catch them? I may have to stop putting this cloud in to try and stop them from coming up too much. But I mean, we're only fishing in 18 inches of water, so it's quite difficult for them to come up any bit shallower than that. As the back's out of the water, it's just that big. Is that it's fish on the swim, in the swim straight away at the moment. Fish in there straight away. I'm kind of resisting the temptation to put a bigger pot on because I'm getting pretty good indications now. Look, I put any more bait in, I'm just going to draw more fish in. That stamp of fish that I've just caught there, I'm happy to catch them all day, geez, that'll be a re right result in February, so there's no point in trying to change anything. Just got to keep at it. So guys, I don't know how far we are through the match because my uh, stopwatch is played up and I ain't picked my phone out of my pocket, but it's probably an hour and a bit. Definitely over an hour. Um, I had that nice carp and the foul locked carp that you saw me over on the line the line and I've not really had much else off it. I've had a not well I tell you lie. I've had a nice perch approaching two pound. Which I didn't film because I thought it was just a small carp when I hooked it and, and then uh, it, when it popped up it was a nice perch. And so I've just rested it because I feel like it's uh, it's got more potential but I don't want to push it too hard. I thought I'd drop over the other spot that I fed with the ground bait, the two balls of ground bait. First dropping I had a roach. Second dropping I uh, bumped a skimmer because the, the maggot went over the up point. Third dropping I've had a skimmer. So this is my fourth dropping I thought I'd put the cameras on. Probably curse it now, I won't get a bite but uh, I thought I'd put the cameras on. And uh, see how we get on. There seems to be a few down there over the ground bait at the moment. This is another fish. Fishing quite light. Fishing quite a light setup here. By the elastic, original slip. Little tiny silverfish hook lengths. Uh, silverfish hooks. Western ones. And this is the second skin, the same stamp as the first one. 
I definitely want a bit of ground bait today and that's all for me. A 50-50 mix of Tom Thicks and Sonia Bates Roach seems to be doing the biz. I've gone to double pinky. I, I, I put a lot of pinkies in that mix. And uh, the pinkies, I've got, I've got some fluorine maggots but they're not quite as bright as these fluorine pinkies. And I just feel like... Uh, put a couple of fluoro ones in on the hook should I say and they just stand out a little bit more on the bottom that's my theory I'm just trying to think about what am I going to do if I need to top this line up and then I'm going to put a little more of ground bait in and I'm going to some, just put some loose feed over the top I don't know at the moment I'm just going to keep it sitting I'm just going to sit it out and take what fish I can which might, that might be the last one I might get another two or three at the most I would suspect would be Best case scenario, might be another one or two skimmers because generally you don't get big runs of skimmers here at, at uh, Acorn, but you know, fish seem to be feeding today. Um, so you just never know. Just laying the rig in, letting it all go out straight, and then uh, the bites are quite positive from these skimmers today, they're moving quite a lot. See that is fast. Absolutely solid with them down there. I'm just worried now because I know that topping up acorn can be an absolute disaster. There's plenty of bait down there for these fish. They're obviously moving around a lot today because the bite's pretty quick and positive. If not moving around much, you get tiny little dimps and dips and it takes ages to get a bite, whereas these fish are giving me indications not long after the hook bait settles. So yeah, I'm trying to double bin kick, I'm not going to change anything at the moment. This is good, this is good. I've sort of rested the, the longer line and uh, this line has come good for me. Well, not come good, but it's produced something which is good, you know. That's probably that four, that three skimmers and a roach. That's sort of like, oh, that's ridiculous. I like the fly of elastics because you can just pull into them nice and firm, get plenty of elastic out, pull the hook in, but then you've got that nice big lump of shock absorber. And I hope that you don't pull out of them, pull out of them out. Definitely enjoying the pinky here today, these little skimmers. I haven't tried them over my pellet line yet, but I haven't tried to even put any bait on the pellet line yet. Don't feel the need to at the moment, just letting this. So let's do what it's been doing. Uh, got the bait slowly falling down in front of them, which I think is a fact. Bait's quite coming so quickly, I think that's helping. I think that's a factor for them. that rig in again just to see if that does induce a bite for us. I feel like the fish is slightly to the right hand side of the swim today for whatever reason. And that float settled a bit a bit left of where it has been settling. So just gonna put it back in and see whether it's we want it over that certain spot. Sometimes you'll find even Sometimes you'll find just one area of a swim, you get more bites than the others. I don't know if that's because your rig's lying better or the fish just sitting there for some reason.
that's been a nice little uh, opportunity to turn the cameras on and get some good footage so hopefully you guys saw that Just sit down to a pinnacle. I was about to say, is that a bite or not? It went under, that's probably a rope hanging onto the end. It's blowing left to right, but the rig does want to come uh, right to left today, so there's a bit of toe against wind, which is nice. It makes a good presentation toe against wind, but. I wouldn't expect it on this on these little canal lakes down the middle like this. Not like toe against wind, normally you just get the wind dominates the toe. Let's go on the again with a smaller fish. I need one more cut and if I get another smaller fish, then I might just put a little nugget in, the rest of it go back out over that carpet line and just see what we got. Get that far bank. Very interesting at the moment. This is as good a response I've had of silvers here for a while. Fish coming out all over the place. So people are having odd fish. So it's fishing well. I, mean, I thought it might be there. We had a we've had a nice mild spell after after Saturday. Saturday was horrid. Wind was blowing a gale, you couldn't present anything and it was cold and then Sunday uh, weren't too bad. Monday's not been too bad at all and last night was mild as well, so we've had like a nice mild spell down here in Somerset. And um, it's definitely helped. Ooh. Sit on it for a bit longer. Sorry about the noise. Very low flying. Over. Oh, we've got, we've got a carp up in the back. Of it. Just wrap around there. Just wrap around there. So we've got a little carp there. What we'll do is we'll put a bit more bait in. If we've got little things like this down there, then we're going to have to keep the bait going in, keep everything happy. There'll be ravelous little things in carp. Just want to go back over and make sure I'm not missing out on any carp over on that far bank line. Quite, I might put quite a rich ball in this time. Quite a feed rich ball. I mean, everything's relative, it's just feed rich compared to the initial feed, but it's not feed rich in the grand scheme of things. Stay in a ball because there's too much particles in there, but that's fine. I feel like the fish are only going, so I've got to go for it, haven't I? Straight back out on the maggot line. Well, my expectation here is we'll get a bike straight away off something decent, but...
it might not happen. So just be cautious about our expectations. If the rest is worked. And then any fish that were sort of still mooching about in that area should have cleaned up what was left. Right. And we I'm gonna draw one more fish to the hook mate. Okay, that's the plan. I mean reality's gonna strike and we're gonna not get a bite, but I'm just telling you what the plan is. What happens and what the plan is are two different things. So the bait, the tiny bit of bait's in, and then we'll just lift the rig like an inch past it, just a little bit further in up, up the slope, and just try and hold the float steady to the back shots. Since there, the float's lifted, and the water significantly now it's gone. That might have been roach liner just picked up the bait there and a roach or a liner that was but interesting it straight away so the rest has done it some good because we weren't getting that many indications before that, you know we weren't getting that many indications that quickly before it took Little bits of ground bait had lost their effectiveness, probably because there was a bit of bait in the swim. Oh, we've got one. Let's just hope he's popping up now. He's not popping up enough already. Definitely a lot of fish running down that far bank shallow. Right, guys, it's quarter past one. Things have slowed down considerably over all my lines. Trying now is fishing quite tight up, very tight up, pinging a few maggots over, and then using the brush to make a little area close to the bank. And then fishing too. And then uh, fishing two, two nice bright pinkies on the rock. Try and uh, Get a bite. Got a couple of small carp doing this. Foul up the better one. So I'm just going to take over doing that. I've got a couple more skimmers from down the middle line on the right. But not many, just like two or three more. And I've started another line up straight in front of me with pellet, but I ain't for skimmers, but I ain't had much over that yet. So I thought I'd try this line over. I was catching a lot, really. Our fish. I wasn't feeling the pressure of anything too drastic. But I can just get these little get these little stocks having a go. Maybe we can just make a few pound here and there. Either you have one, then you can't get one. my line in a minute. I can't get any more bites up this line. A couple more skimmers. Come back to this one. Keep pinging bait on this one. Something like that probably.
but it's going slow and steady but no one's running away with it I can see I can't even see anybody catching Dublin which is bizarre so it's tight it's tight it's got to keep me out keep ticking over see if we can find find a run of fish from somewhere to get us in the frame well it's just gone two got less than an hour to go I think not sure if the fish till three or half past I think the fish took three, so I'm assuming we're fishing till three, so I've got about less than an hour to go. So, um, I've been over and had a couple of little tiny carp tied to the bank, but nothing really amazing is happening. So, I've been pinging maggots over for the last half an hour, 45 minutes. Just a little pouch every now and again. Every time I ship the pole back, it's kind of like, oh, I'll ping some bait in. And then I've gone to the right here where we're over my ground bait line. I had a little skimmer on it and a small carp and then it's gone like a little stocky carp, tiny carp and it's gone a bit crap or hard so I've just started tapping in for a for a little pot on the pole a little pincher, pinkies each pot and I've had like three or four nice roach in a row I'm just sitting doing this because it's fish and I don't, I don't know how many silver spots he's going to pay today I've got a big perch and I've got a few skimmers I've got you know, the roach and I, so maybe I'll be able to pick up something from the silver's pot. And also, I can go over, I'll have a look over on that far bank in the last half an hour and have a quick look, and maybe some carp will turn up there. And some carp turn up there, I've been thinking about that I might get a little run of fish and it might help me out with my overall weight. Really don't know what other people have got, I haven't seen a fat lot coming out. But then I haven't caught a fat lot myself, so I'm just going to keep chipping away, putting bits and bobs in. I've seen the guys in the islands having a few better fish in the last in the last hour or so, so they're going to probably be the frame as the island pegs as usual. And the fish feed and the, and the island pegs are good. And you, you, you do struggle to beat them from these sort of pegs. I might end up ruining not just fishing for silvers all match. Silvers have been here on this swim down the middle. Definitely been here today. I'm messing about having little goes at trying to catch carp over and just putting a mix back together might cost me framing position but I've enjoyed myself so that's all nice. Nice. 